What's good YouTube? My name is Foggy Beats and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a complete breakdown of how I mix my beats start to finish. I've been getting a ton of comments recently asking me to make a video like this so here it is. Before we get started I just want to start off by saying there is no one right way to mix a beat. With that being said, there are certain guidelines and tricks that you can roughly follow to make your mix sound better. But just remember that every song and every beat requires a unique mix for it. Always trust your ears and let's get into the mix. Okay, so right now I have everything on my master channel turned off. I have all these mix knobs set to zero as well as all these knobs. Okay, so the first thing that I do when mixing a beat is I will highlight the hook of the song where all of the instruments are playing at once. Then I'm going to solo the first instrument and when I click play, I'm going to bring this mix knob back until it's hitting around negative 15 dB. that one chord goes over to around negative 13 or negative 14 dB, but that's okay as long as it's sitting around negative 15. The next instrument that I added was actually an ambience and it's the sound of kids playing in a park. Now for ambience, what I like doing is bringing it all the way down to zero with the main instrument playing so that I can reference to it. And what I will do is I will slowly drag the volume knob up until it's sitting just where I like it. Now it's hitting around negative 33 to negative 36 dB, which is very low. But like I said before, I want it in the background. I don't want it to be up front. Now for the next instrument, I'm going to listen with the first two sounds playing just for reference. I'm going to bring it all the way to zero again. So that's too low, too low, too low, too low. right there sounds good. It's important that you start with the volume knob at zero and bring it in because if you're starting with it at zero and you're pulling it back, it's harder to tell for me at least when it's at the right spot. But if you start with it quiet and slowly bring it back in, I find it easier to find the right spot for it. Now the last instrument that I added was actually a bass. So I have to go into the pre hook right here. Now, I'm going to do the same thing, bring it down to zero. Sounds good right there. Now I'm going to be moving on to the drums. And the first drum sound that I like to do is the clap. So I'm going to unmute and bring it to zero. And I'm going to pull it back in until I hear it hitting just above the piano and the guitar. I'm going 
gonna mute the bass now because the next instrument is the 808. It's gonna bring it to zero. Now I'm just gonna repeat this process with the rest of the drums. So now the hi-hat. For the most part, that you don't want the hi-hat hitting as loud as the clap in the 808 is. So right there sounds good. Next, the kick. I'd like to have my kick hitting at least equal to my 808, if not a little higher. Depends on the beat that you're making. But with the trap beat, I usually like to have it punch a little bit through the 808. That's why I bring it up a little bit higher. After you've done that, if you click on the master track, it should be hitting around negative six, which it is. What I like to do is I like to put a fruity limiter and put it onto this preset, which is the 20 hertz and 18 hertz cut. And then I will actually raise the high end around one decibel and I will lower the low end around 0.6 decibels depending on the track and then I will add a limiter I will turn down the attack release and sustain add some saturation and then I would just bring the gain up until it's hitting just below zero decibels <laughs> Now last, if you want your kicks to hit harder, you can put on a soft clipper, turn up the post a little bit, and then turn down the threshold. <laughs> and now your beat is hitting just below zero decibels right where you want it.